Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and in today's video, we will take a look at the latest update for Android, which this is QPR2 Beta 1. That means that this update right here of all the features that we are about to see, this is going to be the December drop. Now we just finished the video talking about QPR1, which is this phone right here. That is all of the features that'll be dropped during the month of September, which should be around September 3rd. Now again, this is QPR2, this is beta one. The size of this update was 676 megabytes. And if you'd like to read more about it, right over here is some of the release notes. It was launched on August 20th. Scrolling on down, taking a look at just a few things. Some of what was listed here is mostly for developers out there. And if you are a little curious on what they're able to do and what you will get as a user experience, they have some stuff with UI, system experience, and accessibility with expanded dark themes, the auto-themed app icons. There's stuff with media and audio, connectivity, privacy and security, and developer productivity, which I'll place this link below the video inside the description. So because a lot of that right there was for developers out there, I will be sharing with you everything that's brand new with this update that we see right now as a normal end user of Google Pixel devices. Now starting this video off, let's take a look at the lock screen widgets. So the widgets are gonna be over here on the right hand side. This is your main lock screen here. As you swipe on over, you're gonna see your widgets. Now this is where you're able to fully customize it. You can add in which widgets are here. You can rearrange them. The only thing that you can't really do is change the width of these widgets. Everything can either be short or they can be tall, but they're always gonna be the width of your phone. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the lock screen widgets is that not all widgets were meant for lock screens. Now, what I mean by that is that some widgets give some information like your calendar or maybe your notes when it comes down to sensitive information. Put down widgets on your lock screen right here that you don't care that people see, like some sports or music. When it comes down to music, I can hit play and it's gonna start playing the song or I can hit pause or next. When it comes down to a lot of these other things, you would have to tap it to unlock your phone. So keep in mind, if there is a type of a widget that is giving off some sensitive information or your schedule or notes or anything like that, I wouldn't put it on the lock screen. I would just make those as widgets if you want on your home screen because no matter what you would have to unlock your phone to get into the device right now anybody can view your lock screen widgets now in order for you to customize your lock screen widgets you just go to your lock screen right here you can swipe on over and then this is where you have some of those widgets that is sitting right there what you can do is you can press and hold anywhere that is empty you unlock your phone and this is where you're able to make adjustments so either you can tap on these ones here you can hit on remove so if there's any of these you don't want you just hit on that remove option. You can also press and hold and then you can move them around so you can bring it up, you can bring it down, or you can even move it over a page wherever you would like these things to sit. You're able to put it anywhere you would like. Now, if you like to add in more, make sure that you just untap off of whatever. You are not selecting anything currently. This is where you go to add widget. Now for this screen here, you have first off featured and then you also have browse. So featured is just showing you some of the featured stuff that maybe you would like to use. Here's browse, this is the main page that you normally see. So if you expand this, let's say you tap on that one, you hit on add, and then now that's gonna be right over here. Again, you're gonna be in a couple different pages. So once you hit on done, this is now your new lock screen widgets that you have. Now there are additional settings when it comes down to your lock screen settings. So once you head right inside of your settings right there, this is where you go to display and touch. Inside of display and touch, scroll down, this is where you see widgets on lock screen. So for this one, this is where you're able to toggle it on and you can also toggle it off. Also, you can see it automatically, or you can have it show automatically during one of these situations. So if you want all of your widgets to show automatically uh, or never, this is where you're able to change it. So right here is never, here is charging, here is while upright and charging, and here is restrict to wireless charging. So let's say that I do while charging. That means that if I take my charger, and let's say that we turn off the phone. If I was to plug in, it's not gonna do anything, it's gonna stay there. But in order for you to view it, let's say that you want to see it when it's charging, turn on the phone screen first, then you plug in, and now as it's charging, you're able to see your lock screen widgets. 
For feature number two that has changed, let's pull in the other device over here. So this one's running on that QPR1. This is QPR2. Again, this is the September launched features. This is the December launching features. And what you can see here is that if you would like to remove an application, you can just do a press and hold. Now over here, it's not there on QPR1, but here it is on QPR2. If there is something that you would like to get rid of off of this screen, you press and hold and then you hit on remove. Now beforehand, what you would have to do is you would have to press and hold on it, and then you would have to bring it all the way up to get it removed. So this makes it a little bit easier for you if there's anything that you would like to take off. Press and hold, and then tap on remove. Feature number three, this is where you're able to change the orientation of your home screen. So all you have to do is you press and hold anywhere that's empty on your home screen, go to your home settings, and what you'll find on the very bottom is landscape mode. The only thing I would, I would stress is don't do that right now because there's a bug where if you actually turn this thing on and then you have it into your landscape mode, what's gonna happen is that it's going to delete all of those application icons, which I literally just did. So now that I have turned this one off, we take a look at my phone, you can see that it just reset my home screen settings here. So I still have a couple of my widgets, but all of my applications are now gone. So as of right now, it's a bug and don't turn on landscape mode, but at least you're able to do that. And now feature number four, this is where you have the better version of 90-10 split. So if you have two different applications running at the exact same time, you can make one of them much larger, but you're able to tap between the two applications to make it a little bit easier and also better to use. And there is haptic feedback the whole time that you are changing the size of these screens. So when you take a look at these ones here, I'm just gonna go right over here and I'm gonna go inside of split screen. And then uh, I'm also gonna split them between 90-10. So right here, you can see that it's also uh, especially rounded at the corners. It's looking really good. But right here is the middle and I feel haptic feedback here. I feel haptic feedback there. I feel it here and I feel it here. So as you are scrolling through everything, this one's a little bit more boxy. It kind of seems a little bit more boxy over here, not so much rounded as it was over here, but there is no haptic feedbacks when I'm scrolling and moving up and down. So right over here, what I can do, I have music down here and then I have this other application up here. So as you are able to switch between your two applications, you're able to simply tap on it and then you're able to get the larger view. And again, you're switching between 90-10. Now over here, there is no you know, moving between the two different applications. It just sits there. So you're able to switch between the two applications super quick and easy, and you also get the haptic feedback at all of the different areas. And I believe that there's like three or four different haptic feedback spots that you had none over here. Now let's head over inside of settings because there is a few changes that was also noticed. So when you take a look over here on the, the, the QPR2 beta one, you can see that digital well-being and parental controls are separate. Now, from beforehand, they were together. So digital well-being and parental controls, both of them were found right here. Now they are separate with their own sections. So this way, if you want everything digital well-being, then everything parental controls. Also inside of settings where there is a difference, if you go inside of the network and internet, uh, right over here in QPR2, there is a brand new feature. It's called Mobile Network Security, which you don't see right over here. And inside of this one, it allows you to turn on or off that 2G network protection. So I have this right here. I'm using Google Fi, but these settings help protect your calls, messages, and data from outdated or unencrypted networks that could expose you to data theft or surveillance. So for this one, I'm just going to turn this one on. So now we have 2G network protection. Now to take a look at wallpaper and style when it comes down to your home screen. So when you take a look at this one, you're going to have a different look when it comes down to how this is all set up. So right over here, this is for your lock screen. Then right up over here, this is going to be for your home screen. Now, as you scroll on down, you take a look at icons. This is where you'll have a little bit of a change. So this is your default icons. This one's gonna be more of like your theme icon. So this is minimal. And then you also have create. Now this one right here is not available for me or anybody to play with. It says that the app isn't installed. Now I took a look at all the applications that I have on my phone and I wasn't able to see anywhere where there is an update, but this is where you'd be able to at least know that at some point you'll be able to create some of your own application icons. Another small change inside of the wallpaper and style is when you go into more wallpapers and you go to choose a photo, especially if you would like to add effects to it, you're gonna see the material you little shaped icons in the middle of the screen. 
uh, which basically just means that it's working. So when you go into effects, you see that material U that was right there. Uh, that is something that is new on the past devices over here with QPR one, you just have like the gradient color where it's kind of showing you that it's working, but now you have that along with the icon in the middle. Now let's take a look at widgets for your home screen because there is a change here. When you take a look at widgets, this is where you have your little featured options right there. You have to swipe it left and right just to take a look at it. Right now you have two different tabs. This one is set up as your featured, so it shows you the full entire page so you wouldn't have to swipe between the two. And then if you wanna get this full entire list that's right there, you just go right there to browse. So you'll have the full list. Also, when that search little search icon up over there, it starts there and as you swipe down, you can see that it kind of moved up a little bit. This one up over here does not move at all. There is no change when it comes down to that little search option. Also, when it comes down to this arrow, you can see it looks to be a little bit smaller and it's also shaded in. This is just a you know big arrow and it's not shaded in. So you have a few different changes right here. The biggest one is you have featured and then you have browse. Over here, you have everything that's just mostly set up as browse with some of your featured right there horizontally. And now for dark theme expanded. So you noticed that one beforehand when I was kind of looking at some of the developer things that there is. This is where you go into your display and touch. And then underneath the dark theme option right there, you have this one. So this is expanded. So it'll automatically applies dark theme to more applications for improved accessibility. Now, at the very beginning of this video, when I was showing off that you have the expanded dark theme, that means that it's for the developers that they can throw it into all of their applications. So now, instead of standard, which is applies dark theme across your device and supported apps, this one automatically applies dark theme to more apps for improved accessibility. Now, going back one page, staying inside of that display and touch, you have this option right here for enhanced HDR brightness. Now, this is where you have a side by side. So this way you'd be able to see what is happening when you do turn on or off your enhanced HDR brightness. That means it's going to brighten and expand the color range and clarity and high dynamic range HDR for images and videos. HDR content will appear brighter. Now, if you don't want to use the enhanced HDR, you can just turn this off, then everything will just stay standard. And again, staying inside of the display and touch, if you scroll down to take a look at screen saver. For this one, there's gonna be a couple different differences. Over here, you'll have this option where you're able to select any of these ones, but your preview button is right there. When it comes down to these ones, again, when you are selecting, you're gonna have this little eye right there, which means you're able to preview it. So as you go through it, you tap on this little eye and you're able to take a look at it. Now, let's say that we take a look at this one and then also preview. When it comes down to these colors on the brand new QPR2, you finally have the clock that is enabled with this one. When beforehand, it would just only show colors. Now, as you're charging your phone and you want a screensaver, you have colors going on as well as the time. Also, a couple differences is where things are kind of placed. On the very top over here on QPR2, it says when to show, it's right there on the top. Over here, it was on the bottom. You also have show additional information. That's gonna be right up over here. You have show additional information and you also have low light mode. So there's quite a few differences when it comes down to your screensaver screen. So you have a couple different new features, a couple different changes and a different way to view or preview these screensavers. Now heading back over inside of settings, this time we're gonna go inside of the system settings to take a look at date and time. Because now what happens is that when you are traveling, especially via airplane and you go to a completely different time zone, if you have the automatic time zone turned on, which I believe most people probably do, now you'll get a notification for the time zone change. So rather than you eagle-eyeing the time when you are turning off your airplane mode to see if it switches or to compare it versus a regular watch, this is now when you would get a notification and then you know for a fact that it did change automatically. And then to finish off this video, going back one screen, let's say you take a look at your software updates. Now you'll be able to notice that your Google Play system update has the latest update, which is October 1st, rather than being stuck on June or July. But that is everything for today's video. So there is a lot of stuff to unpack here when it comes down over into the QPR2. This is beta one. Again, these are all of the new features and changes that'll be launching during the month of December. Everything that we just got done finishing with the video on just a couple days ago, that was everything that will be launched during September, hopefully right around the launch period of September 3rd. But hopefully you guys have appreciated this video. If you guys did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. 
And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.